So what is RetroPy? Well, RetroPy is a piece of software that allows you to play all of your favorite retro arcade games from a single console interface. It's packed with emulators from the early Atari all the way to Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, and even beyond. And I'll show you how you can get it set up quickly and easily. So let's get into it. There are three options for installing and configuring RetroPie. One, use a Raspberry Pi with a micro SD card. Use the Pi Imager to install the OS and install the RetroPie software package. Two, use a dedicated laptop or PC, create a bootable flash drive with an OS, and install the RetroPie package from there. Three, use your current laptop or PC to configure a virtual machine to run RetroPie on. That is the option we'll talk about today, but I'll show you really quick how to get started for each option. Go to the official Raspberry Pi website. For our purposes, you can download for Windows, but there's also Mac and Ubuntu options as well. I already have it downloaded, and when you spin it up, given some options of what Pi that you have, and based on the Pi that you have, it will give you operating systems that are compatible uh, for that version of Raspberry Pi. And you can see by selecting different versions of the Raspberry Pi, you get different versions of operating systems. All right, your second option is to take that downloaded ISO that we just downloaded and make a bootable flash drive. And we can use Rufus to do this. So you can go out to the Rufus website and create a bootable flash drive. Uh, this would be if you want to dedicate, you know, a PC or a laptop for RetroPie, dedicating all of its resources. So you would just launch Rufus. Um, you'd select the ISO that you want. And pretty much from there, you're just accepting the defaults, boot to it, and then you're going to follow the same steps as you'll see coming up next. The last option is the option we're going to go over today, and that's going to be using a virtual machine on your PC to spin up RetroPie, and we're going to use VMware Workstation Player to get that done. All right, now that you have all your hardware, First thing that we're going to do is we're going to go out to Ubuntu's official website and we're going to look for Ubuntu 22.04.4 LTS. Uh, that's long-term support. This version, I think, is a more stable version for what we're going to do later. The latest version, 24 dot something, seems to be giving me problems with the workstation player. So we're just going to stick with 2204 for now. And you can see that you have a desktop image and a server image to choose from. Um, the desktop image is what we're after. But instead of downloading it right there from that particular link, if you scroll down, you're going to see a series of available downloads. And we're actually going to choose about 4.7 gigs. The reason why we're going to use that option uh, is because we get the uh, checksums along with it. That's going to be important for verifying the integrity of the files that we download. This comes handy when you're dealing with ROM files or BIOS files or other files you're getting from third-party websites. We're able to ensure that everything that we download wasn't compromised um, along the way. And you'll see here after this download completes, we can check its hash value and then we can compare it against the original hash. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. Uh, once that's done downloading, okay, you want to open up your command prompt. All right. And then we're just going to change directory into the directory of your downloads folder. 
So for me, that's just CD downloads. Um, and we're going to type in cert util space dash hash file space uh, type UB and then you can probably hit tab and it will autofill from there. So that's the file that we're going to be generating the hash from. So then just take uh, space and just do SHA256 and that's just specifying the algorithm that we're going to use. So that will just take a second to load and you can see that's the hash it generated and it does match the original hash of the file so we can we can move on. So now we're going to install VMware Workstation Player. All right, so we're going to click next here. All right, and we're just going to accept the uh, terms of the license agreement. No problem. Um, we can keep it standard here. You can add the enhanced keyboard driver um, for your purposes. Just for me, I'm not going to do it right now it's for the purposes of the tutorial. Uh, and let's not join the customer experience. Um, and looks like the defaults there are okay, so let's just hurry up and get that going. Um, shouldn't take too long. Uh, you could use, you know, Hyper-V um, or VirtualBox or something. Um, I like to use the Workstation Player because you can pass through the gamepad USBs into the virtual machine easier uh, using Workstation Player. So. All right, we can go ahead and uh, finish that. Awesome. Let's launch it. All right, it's asking for a license. We can use the free license, no problem. Click finish there. And now we want to create our virtual machine. So we just go up to the top and hit create new virtual machine. Uh, we are going to use that ISO that we downloaded, right? That 2204. 03 um, and that's where I have it so let's select it uh, and it's going to use the easy install and it'll give us uh, a prompt here to personalize it for us so I'm just going to use the name retro pie as the user give it a eight character password uh, the virtual machine name let's just call it retro pie PC um, let's give it 50 gigs of space, uh, keep it in a single file uh, for now, uh, and let's go ahead and customize it right from the get-go. The minimum RAM is 4 gigs, but um, if you can, give it 6, just so it uh, runs a little faster. Processor cores, we can leave it 2. Enable the virtualization because later on we're going to actually install Workstation Player within the VM uh, and I'll sh show you why we're going to do that. As far as USB controller compatibility, let's leave it at 2.0 so we can see the game pads when we do the pass through because um, sometimes the game pads are going to be USB 2.0. All right, let's go ahead and power it on and click finish there. So now we'll just get a standard install of the Ubuntu desktop. From here, we're going to install uh, RetroPie with Emulation Station and all of our ROMs and all of our custom features on here. So this is just one way to do it. Uh, as I mentioned, um, you can install it on a, on a Raspberry Pi. You can install it on a... PC that's running something else, um, or you can install it on a dedicated, you know, laptop or PC where all it's running is RetroPie. This is a pretty standard prompt that we'll just click through. Um, you know, use English for the keyboard. All right, uh, let's do a minimal installation. Uh, we really don't need a lot of this other. All, all these other packages um, unless you want them for your own reasons but if we're just going to be running RetroPie on it let's just do that and get the download updates while installing Ubuntu option in there uh, that way we can just kind of get a lot of the updates out of the way 
now uh, rather than doing it later. And we do want to install it on this virtual hard disk. Um, so we want to erase everything that's on there. All right, that's just telling us, okay, it's going to be reformatting everything. Okay, yes, it is asking for the time zone. Go ahead, click through that. All right, and uh, again, just fill out your name, your username, your PC name, and again, do your passwords. I like to just log in automatically. I'm not too worried about it uh, right now. And I don't have this as part of an Active Directory domain, so we can leave that unchecked. Uh, I'm just gonna wait till this copying files part is completed. Uh, that's just preference of mine. So this is a good option if you want to either test it out or if you want to be able to just quickly spin it up and maybe you know, make changes to it over time and doing it all in software, you know, on your gaming PC or on your personal PC. Uh, it's just a really easy way to, you know, play the games when you want, turn the VM off when you're done. And it doesn't really, you're not hogging, you know, a complete laptop for it, but yet you're using the, you know, the more powerful resources um, of your personal computer to run it versus, you know, a Raspberry Pi where you're pretty limited with the resources. All right, so we are complete there. Let's click continue. And now we can just wait for the system to install. All right, looks like the system is complete. We can hit restart now. Okay, and now we are logged in uh, to our new virtual machine uh, running Ubuntu desktop. Um, and you can kind of skip through the wizards here for now. All right, so first thing is we're gonna go into the terminal. Okay, so open up the terminal. And I'm just using the uh, documentation um, from the official uh, RetroPie uh, site which is in the description as well if you go over there it, it is pretty straightforward on how to download it install it and configure it so uh, we're still going to go through it right now here with you guys and let's just uh, ignore that for now so i'm just pasting the first command uh, sudo apt update and upgrade so that will just um, ensure that we have the latest uh, apt packages and updates on our system so when we go to install the retropy uh, setup script um, everything will install as it should so hit y there to continue this should not take too long Okay, so when that is done, uh, we're gonna go on to the second command here, which I'm just pasting in. Uh, this is actually gonna give us the uh, necessary packages that we need for RetroPy itself. And that should be pretty quick. And again, any missing packages or errors, you can look on that, um, website for a specific command you can run um, in case you have any issues at that step. But uh, here you can see that we didn't have any issues. So we're going to continue to the next one, which is uh, downloading the latest RetroPie setup script. Uh, that also should be pretty quick. Um, so now that it's all downloaded, um, let's change directory. So do CD right there, retropy-setup. Uh, 
run sudo dot backslash retropy underscore setup dot sh that is the that is the script that is going to launch all right so you'll see this uh blue screen here um it's kind of giving you an overview of uh, what it is uh, so just click OK with, the, with that, and now this is this is your kind of script that you're going to work with. So uh, basic install is going to install kind of the emulators and ROM folders for you, and then we'll get into later on how to add more emulators and add more uh, packages. But the basic install will get you started, and that will take a little bit, I would say about 15 minutes. Okay, and you may have noticed that your screen may have locked while it was doing its install, uh, which is kind of annoying, but we can actually fix that right now, uh, just to not worry about it later. Uh, just go to the bottom left, go into settings, right? Uh, and we're going to be looking for privacy, privacy right there. All right, then go down to screen. Okay, and then here we can change the uh, blank screen display. Let's put it on never. Turn off the automatic screen lock. Let's turn off lock screen on suspend. And let's just get rid of notifications for it too. So now we don't have to worry about that later on. Okay. So the other thing we're going to want to do is come down here to this configuration. Emulation station is actually going to be the front end. We're going to set that to auto start. When it reboots, it will start for you automatically. You don't have to go in and tell it to launch. All right, so you can see that we have a lot of other options here as well, but let's just get out of that for now. So let's go over, let's exit, and let's actually type in the word emulation station, one word, and press enter. And you'll see that the front end launches, but there's no game pads detected. So right now, we're just going to press F4, and we're going to quit out of that, and we're going to get our, our game pad detected. So plug in your USB game pad to your PC, okay, and then you're going to come up to player removable devices and then for me it's going to be this xbox series usb gamepad and we're going to say yes disconnect from the host and now connect to this virtual machine so that's all you have to do to get your gamepad connected so now we can come back to the terminal launch emulation station again Now it launches, now it sees the gamepad. So now we can hold the button on the controller and now here we are. And now we can set up our controller. So we're just gonna go through, you know, push the button that corresponds with the task there. So if you get to an option that, you, that you're not gonna use, just hold a button for about two or three seconds and it will skip itself. So we're just going to keep going all the way down. Uh, I'm not going to enable the hotkey or anything either. Uh, so we'll get to the end. We'll press OK. Say, hey, you didn't enable the hotkey. It's going to use select as the default. And for me, that's going to be fine. So we'll click, click yes there. And now you can see, great, we are at the uh, RetroPie home screen. However, we don't have any thing to see. <laughs> There's no emulator showing, no ROM showing, and that's because we don't have anything uh, loaded in our system. So um, this would be the time when I would say, okay, well, um, you know, go go access your ROMs wherever you're getting them. Um, I'm not, not going to say where you should be getting them from, just as long as they are, you know, of legal means or backups of what you already have. 